Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me begin by thanking both of you for your continued service to our, to our country. Uh, Director Haynes, in, in April, Secretary Blinken told Congress that Iran's attempts to assassinate former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo were real and ongoing. And this month, is Israel, uh, Israeli press reported that uh, an agent for the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Quds Force was thwarted from an assassination attempt on a U.S. general in Germany. Why is Iran apparently so emboldened right now, and how can the intelligence community and national security communities at large change this dangerous trend and deter Iran from these malicious actions? Thank you, Senator. Uh, so I think um, we should probably pick this up in closed session. What I think I can say just in open session is uh, a fair amount of their motivation in this scenario we assess to be in relation to Soleimani as part of their sort of efforts for revenge and, uh, and in, is a particularly challenging area, I think, to deter them from action in this space. But we can discuss what uh, more specifics, I think, in closed session. Thank you, sir. Very well. Uh, Director Haynes, once again, the crisis at the United States southern border has literally exploded under this administration and continues to deteriorate. Uh, Reuters reported that the U.S. officials at the Department of Homeland Security are preparing for as high as 9,000 arrests per day. Now, as the economic and political conditions in Latin America continue to spark waves of migration that put pressure on our southern border, how serious does the intelligence community see this as a threat to our country? And also, how and to what degree is the intelligence community shifting resources to address the surge at our southern border? Thank you, Senator. So we have stood up a migrant crisis cell, which is essentially uh, a cell that helps to bring together intelligence from across the community to support DHS's efforts. And it's really looking south of the border at effectively migrant uh, movements that may be coming towards the southern border so that we can help them to prepare, in effect, for uh, encounters on the border. Are you uh, in agreement with the assessment that there could be as many as 9,000 arrests a day? Is that an assessment that you would concur with? Sir, I don't look at those particular uh, questions. That is within the Department of Homeland Security. I'm, I'm just curious because that when you're doing your planning to determine what your needs are, clearly in order for you to do the planning, you've got to have an assessment of what the expected flow would be. I'm just curious if uh, it's not meant as a gotcha question. No, 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 it's of course. It, 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 so we don't, we don't assess our needs uh, along the border because we don't actually have needs along the border. In other words, that's sort of the DHS role is to figure out how can we plan for the number of incidents or uh, encounters that they'll have on the border. Um, and for us, what we're trying to do is understand what are the drivers, what are the ultimate flows that are likely to occur, and we try to set up intelligence so that we can actually provide some indication and warning of here is where you're likely to see an increase in the flow, either south or north, or how it is, you know, and where it's coming from ultimately. Does that make sense? I don't, it, yeah. It does. I, I, it just catches me a little bit by surprise that, that in, in, in your planning that most certainly you have to have a good communication with Homeland Security. I'm assuming there's a good communication there. Of course. And that based upon what their needs are is really what you're doing is, is providing them with additional resources. And you're also at the same time gathering intel based on the, the possibility, the strong possibility that individuals would try to come in through the southern border. And based upon that, I was just curious, and I know that we're in, in, a, in a public discussion, but Nonetheless, I think it's, it's something that's been talked about publicly and the fact that we've got folks from all over the world that are using that as an entryway into the United States, and most certainly you're aware of that. Absolutely. No, I, I'm not trying to sort of duck the question or anything. I think, the um, you know, we see a very high flow. There's no question. What happens is the Department of Homeland Security, we have... Um, somebody who's a liaison that sits within their sort of uh, spaces that tells us here are the requirements and they basically are looking for indications and warning of, you know, you're likely to see a flow along this part of the border, that sort of thing, as opposed to 
us being able to help them determine, okay, today you're going to see X number of people coming through the southern border as a whole. Thank you. It, it, just one other quick question here. The intelligence community and Congress are working to flesh out the Foreign Malign Influence Center's mission, the budget, and size, among other issues. But with the 2022 midterms almost here, we're probably behind the curve a little bit. What are the major roadblocks stopping the IC from standing up this intelligence center? So we've just gotten appropriations basically through the FY22 uh, budget, which has been great. And we're currently building up the Farm Line Influence Center. We already had the election threat executive. So we've been doing work on what the threats might be to our elections. Uh, that is now pulled into the Farm Line Influence Center. And, um, and we effectively have the budget for up to 12 people um, in the uh, Farm Line Influence Center under this context. And we've asked for funding for FY23, essentially to be able to expand it by about three people, but also to um, allow us to, to um, access expertise and knowledge that we think is critical and, uh, and really just to help facilitate what the community is doing across the board on these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time has expired. Thank you.